Hey guys, not technically gaming related again in this one here, but it's YouTube related. I think pretty much everyone, whether you're a creator or just a you know viewer on the platform here, everyone cares about the dislike button removal and the potential of things like NFTs coming to the platform. So these are the two main topics. I wanna show you kind of some of the highlights from this interview. I don't know how Ludwig was able to get the actual CEO of YouTube to just come on his podcast here. And he gets kind of funny joking around there and stuff also. It's really actually a pretty good interview. I'll be linking it below for you guys. Yeah. But dislikes I think was different, right? We, 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 we knew that mm -hmm. it was gonna be controversial. We have to do what is the right thing for the ecosystem as a whole. And running the platform, we have access to data that individual creators may not have, meaning that we are looking at all the statistics of how the overall platform is performing and using. And we're not just running one experiment, we're running many experiments, and we're actually running it over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And so something like dislikes, we, you know, we ran many experiments on that. And, and I understand there were people, you know, many people, and, and yes, we heard loud and clear why people were unhappy with that decision. But then we also saw the impact that it was having on a lot of new creators. And, um, you know, and, and that's bad, right? Like we need, to ha we need to have and continue to support smaller creators and how they're growing. That's really important for the long-term health of our ecosystem. Sure. And so we, for something like that, where we have run many experiments, we have really thought about it and heard from many creators who probably, do, you know, you're not hearing from um, when we remove the dislike, the, the creators that were harmed right. by having it. Uh, you know, for, for decisions like that, we just, we know it's gonna be tough, but we just power through it. Not really sure if I buy her, uh, you know, answer here on this being about small creators. I, you know, think that's probably a bit of PR spin to try to keep people on their side with it and get us to understand. But, my, you know, if I had to put my money somewhere, my gut would say that it's more likely protecting large corporations that have YouTube channels, not small creators. You know, we want to do the right thing for the community. We're there to be supportive. I mean, that's ultimately what YouTube's about is supporting creators and growing creators. But we need to do that holistically, meaning the whole creator ecosystem. And sometimes you have one part that's loud, but another part that we know is being harmed. And so we are looking across all parts of YouTube to make it a stronger YouTube for the end. That makes sense. Okay, hear me out. Sure. Maybe no one's come up to you this idea. Sure. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. Okay. I'm some people like dislikes, some people don't. Yeah toggle well the problem with that is that it creates a pressure for the creators to have it on because their audience will be like wow you it's don't have that's so true on you loser it's, i mean yes that, that really would be true. that would be part of it i mean we spent a lot of time looking at it from lots of different perspectives mm -hmm. and it is complicated too when you have too many different choices i mean like with any feature you could be like oh why don't you let you know creators choose and have this on and that off and that on and that off but you know ultimately it's a platform and if there's too much inconsistency in the experience for users it's also that's also not good mm, like if it's verification toggle dislike toggle like toggle is it theater mode toggle and then it's too many toggles and then everyone's youtube's different yeah then everyone's confused like oh wait what how does youtube work i mean our job at, at the end is to create a youtube mm. that everyone wants to watch that just intrinsically works well and that drives the most engagement that makes yeah. sense yeah i say that does make sense pretty much exactly what i was thinking that makes sense the other thing I would say is that she's definitely correct in that if there was like a toggle option for the creator to choose whether to have them on or off, it would absolutely just create pressure for them to be on. Like by default, if you didn't have them on, right, people would give you shit and make fun of you, tease you about it, assume that it meant something horrible and negative when really maybe you're just... And you're just kind of sensitive and it really, you know, makes you sad when people don't like your video or whatever. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's never really bothered me, but I could definitely see that. It's honestly really true, like in anything, right? Even just like inside of the video game, right? If you create an option for something, people automatically feel forced that they have to do it. This is why, you know, sometimes when people 
you know, in the gaming space, it can be really hard to find balance that works for, you know, the different types of players, right? And, you know, other players will just be like, well, just, you know, give the option for whatever. And, you know, the other side is like of that and why they don't always do that is because if you give even the option, the option creates the FOMO and the pressure and it essentially just it immediately creates pressure to have to do the option because the option exists. It's a bummer that that's the way things are, right? But humans are weird and that's the way we are. Now it's going to get even more interesting because he's going to hit her with the NFT topic. Yeah. So dislikes got removed in 2021. Yeah. NFT. Okay. Hmm. Do you have an NFT? I do have, have a few. I also have one. Okay. It's called <laughs> Goose Ass. Okay. <laughs> it's it's worth a couple of Ethereum. It's not it's on open sea. Uh it's so funny. I saw like some of the comments and stuff in the video, right? And a lot of it is just like people loving it. And it's pretty funny that Ludwig here is 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 really joking around and being so casual with like the CEO of YouTube, right? And just hitting her up with the goose ass uh NFT here. And, uh, you know, this section's a bit longer. I'm going to try to summarize a bit of it for you guys. And then obviously people want to see the whole thing. They can go there and check it out. But essentially this whole section here talks about how they believe that it's just not smart for them to leave that out there on the table and for their creators to need to go somewhere else in order to do their NFT deals, which are happening either way whether they're involved or not and they feel both like right it's obviously not smart for them they're missing out on monetization and such and being able to basically say like this is another thing we offer our creators because there is a battle basically between all the different live streaming services and content platforms right and you want the people to want to use your platform and i can tell you right as a smaller creator like YouTube, especially even just having this shit with like the CEO cares enough to come on a podcast and talk about these things. This is pretty massive in my opinion, right? It's a big selling point for me. And then she also talked about like, you know, wouldn't you as like us as your platform, you would want us looking at new technologies, right? And potentially pursuing that. And ultimately I would say, yes, I agree. But you know, I have a lot of concerns with NFTs not crypto as a whole but nfts in particular so far most of what i've seen right is they're just really good rug pulls really good scam ways to make money you know you don't actually own anything when you purchase an nft but the second reason is is that we also are in the best position to verify which assets actually belong to which creators mm -hmm. so like it would be a problem for you if some other third-party site were selling your videos without knowing that it belonged to you or you went goose ass yes or your goose ass well your goose ass i don't think is really like i don't think that's really core uh, uh content that belongs to you but getting there um okay but anyway <laughs> even your like look if you want to invest in your goose ass like <laughs> yeah then go ahead yes okay. and we would want to be there to protect you with uh -huh. it and if you want to sell your goose ass then like yes we would want to make sure that you are selling it and not someone else is selling it sure. and with all the investment that we have from content id we are in the best position to act to know which content belongs to which creators True. and so it would be a problem if someone else was selling your content and they would just not have the ability to know what belonged to whom mm, so um, you guys are like the people who know everything so you can also easily facilitate the sale of it yeah and do the right thing for creators because we want to make sure that if it's a if it turns out that this is an important form of monetization we want to be there to support you and make sure that your content isn't being you know basically stolen and sold somewhere else mm -hmm. um the second thing i'd say about it is we do think that nfts will enable new forms of um, monetization for creators like if it turns out that nfts enable new forms uh, for creators to be able to raise money to be able to get paid to have a business then it's important for us to be there and like at the end of the day what youtube does is like we're a platform that distributes content and does monetization and if nfts is an important part of that equation then we think we should be there are you Makes concerned sense. at all about the dumb actors and the liability and getting in a coffeezilla video where he like roasts you for bad nfts and 
in that stuff? Is that like a fear? Is that like an internal? <laughs> I don't think it's not like we're afraid of it. It's just that we think it's a it's going to be a opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're, we're like, wouldn't you want us as your platform to be investing in new technologies where we could generate revenue for creators? I am and a bitter millionaire who's mad at other millionaires for how much millionaires want and how much more they get. And I mm -hmm. always feel like the rich get richer. And I feel like NFTs don't help what I view as the most important thing that you talked about uh -huh. earlier, which is small creators. Yeah. It's usually just for bigger creators to get more money and oftentimes not do the due diligence of correctly taking care of the community that invests NFTs and actually doing the perks uh -huh. instead of just like. That's the big problem right there, right? Is how often people are screwing over their communities with rug pulls essentially using things like NFTs because they think that it's safer on their end right that they're not going to get busted and go to jail but you can check out some stuff over on kira tv's channel to uh, find out that uh, you know that is coming to an end and they are starting to come for those guys like here's my million and run away with the big money bag but don't you think this could also help small creators i i would actually argue that nfts can actually help small creators to be able to get started um like we've seen that already with with people with creators and musicians using it as a form of fundraising and then using that as a way of being able to do additional work and with a lot of I think this probably depends a lot on what your subjective definition of small creator is you're not going to make very much of anything when you're a truly small creator right because there's a very small amount of people looking at your stuff and then right we all know that inside of that small amount of people looking at your stuff there's a much even smaller percentage of those people that are willing to go the next level and do something like give you money because they appreciate your content which includes buying your nft i would think Probably getting someone to buy your NFT might be even harder than getting them to sign up on your Patreon or something because there's a lot of sketchiness around NFTs. I know I personally would be much more likely to give someone five bucks on a Patreon than buy an NFT, even if they were the same exact price, right? I, I just, I, I don't have, I don't, I don't want an NFT at all and I don't see a reason to want one. Of the smart contract stuff, there's potentially a way for creators to have more liquidity where they're only selling a part of the assets. They're raising, um, you know, they're raising some funds. And if the content does really well, they're able to reap some of those benefits from that as well. So I, I actually would argue it's going to be a really important tool in the future to smart to help small creators. That's fair. Possibly, and though. If any creators out there want to get a lot of money, invest in goose ass <laughs> and you will be rich. Sorry, that was a sponsor. <laughs> uh, speaking of monetization, I don't know if you saw this video, Hank Green dropped. Well, well, actually, is there anything else with NFTs? I mean, we saw that people were really concerned. Is there anything else that you, that you, is there anything you really want us to not do with NFTs? Because, you know, we definitely understood. I appreciate that. I really appreciate her asking that question right there, right? Specifically, is there anything you're worried about us doing and you want us to not do? Please tell me. That is great. And again, right, as a smaller creator and just watching this, like one of the things that is beautiful to see here is just the CEO caring enough to come and do these conversations and answer these questions. You know, the Twitch CEO doesn't, doesn't do this. Like I, I watch Devin Nash stuff, right? He dives into the differences between the two. And this is one of the big things he always talks about is the upper levels of YouTube acting like they care and the upper levels of Twitch not acting like they care. But it was polarizing. There was definitely a lot of feedback. That, like, that for as many people as there were excited about it, there were definitely uh, sig significant uh, detractors as right. well. I think it's a blight in the gaming space to even be involved in NFTs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, usually, true. like, I even if you were somewhat interested in the technology, it's not worth entering the space uh, because of how much backlash you'd receive from the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. uh, is what it feels like in gaming. So, so nobody touches it, and anyone who does. Um, well, usually just gets, gets memed on. So that's that's one reason. But Ends then up also, in a Cure I, TV again, video. it just feels like it's usually for rich getting richer. And I think when you, when all the dust settles and NFTs are involved and they're on Twitter and they're here and it's crypto.com and you can't look anywhere without NFTs, I think 95% of all the value of the purchase NFTs will go to bigger creators who are already millionaires. And then the small creators, I don't think will profit that much. Sadly, got to say a big agree with Ludwig there. 
Uh, I, maybe I should have let him finish. That is also most monetization changes, because that's just kind of how it works, which is, which is just rich getting richer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's that's it right there. Is that that's definitely not an NFT specific problem. That's just generally the way things work. And it's not anything sinister and evil, right? Like if you talk in the world of content creation, it's it's just gonna be like a natural snowballing type of effect, right? You you need more eyes on you in order to make money, even from just the ad revenue. It doesn't matter whether you're talking the NFT or the ad revenue or a potential amount of Patreons and YouTube members, donations on live streams, any of these types of things, it all starts with having a decent large audience watching you in the first place so it's everything kind of goes this way like right it's you need more eyes on you and more traffic into your business for your business to make more money so it's very difficult to get out of this the rich get richer as you grow it's easier to make more money right the initial start is like the hardest part and then eventually you can almost get to a point where it feels like there's momentum, right? But the, the starting out is usually the hardest part of anything, even in lifting, right? Take a barbell, right? And just lay that shit on your chest and try to start from like the very bottom part of the press. It's a lot harder than if you were to get to like lower it down and get a little bit of rebound reflex and then press it back up. Starting at the bottom is harder and as you power it up oh yeah that momentum builds it gets pretty easy toward the lockout usually if you're starting dead off your chest yeah, well i i well anyway we'll 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 check in in mm -hmm. a few years and we'll we'll okay, see okay 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 five okay, years, five five years. years okay in. even even two years i i think okay. in, i think two years we're gonna we'll we're gonna be really careful sure. I, I i think that you are gonna be okay with what we do with nfts that's my prediction in okay. two years and in five years because that's our goal our goal is really to use it to protect creators protect creator assets and enable new forms for them to be able to get liquidity and raise money mm -hmm. and um so we'll see we'll see how it if goes i'm but... wrong you have to buy the goose ass for me for one thousand dollars <laughs> if you're wrong no if, if you're wrong sorry. oh if i'm wrong oh yeah, okay if, if wrong, i'm wrong you buy yeah 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 okay 1, sure sure if i'm wrong i'll buy a goose ass for a thousand dollars yeah no problem i'm i'm uh okay i i, I don't I'm into this i don't now. think i'm gonna be a proud owner of goose ass <laughs> i honestly your loss <laughs> Right, shout out to Ludwig here for both getting the CEO of YouTube to say goose ass repeatedly, but also uh, right, her like confidence here in, in, in being willing to do that bet. But, like, no, I'm confident that like what we plan to do with NFTs is not going to be some scammy bullshit. It sounds like they really are trying to do the opposite. And it makes sense, right? They're YouTube super official. They're not trying to do any scammy BS and like ruin their reputation, right? They are, they're not needing to do that to make money. They're, they're making good money and they want to make good money and continue to make even more by being the best platform for creators to be on. The more creators that choose to use their platform, which is already the case, right? They're like YouTube is, is the number one, right? Like Twitch might be the first thing you think of for live stream, but if you just talk about amounts of users for consuming content, like YouTube is, it's absolutely insane. And so like they, they don't need to do any BS. It's nice to hear, of course, because it's NFTs, I still have a bit of concerns just like Ludwig does here, but it's gonna be interesting to see where it goes. And again, right, it's just, it's pretty funny him getting her to say, you know, his goose ass NFT and her being willing to do the, the bet, right? Like, you know, if, if, if I'm wrong, I'll buy your shitty goose ass NFT. Can I tell you about a dream of mine? You go uh, to my maybe. YouTube home. <laughs> it's not about <laughs> goose ass or anything. It's a normal know. dream. Standard okay, dream. okay, okay. A dream about YouTube videos. If, okay, you go to my homepage, uh -huh. Ludwig, uh -huh. and then it's under home, it, 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 whatever you want it to be. Then yeah. it's videos, and it's my yeah. long form videos. Yeah. Then there's a shorts tab. And then there's a live stream tab. Yes. And it's all there. Yes. But, in one channel. Yes. But but not all mixed together in the way that it is today. Yes. Because right now I cannot safely uh -huh. end my stream and keep my live stream public because it'll be filtered into my regular videos, which is like if some guy likes watching me for 10 minutes because I edit it down and then he sees eight hours of me playing Elden mm -hmm. Ring. Mm-hmm. 
he's never coming back. Yeah. I lost him. So I have to I have to unlist and then it's like here's the unlisted and then people are like yep. where do I find the live streams and then I have to make another channel where I upload the live streams in full. Yep. It's very confusing. Although it could be good, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've heard this from creators and we are working on it. I like that. I that's so good to hear. So good to hear. I included this part mostly just because this part uh, is really exciting for me. But I also know that some of my viewers will really appreciate knowing this is coming too. Right now it's kind of a mess, right? I do the live streams and then they're unlisted on the channel. I've tried to leave them public or something, but I think it does really mess with your algorithm very negatively. So then I start doing the VOD channel, but it's really a huge pain in the butt because I have to download these like four hour long live streams and then clip out, you know, like the, the BS from the beginning or the end. And then right, do a whole another upload and process and all this other stuff. And I'm running out of hardware or hard drive space. And, and it, it takes a long time and it stops me from doing other stuff. Like I can't really play any games or do any other working on very much stuff while I have things, you know, uploading, bogging down all my bandwidth. It's a huge pain in the butt. And if it could all just be in one channel, but not jumbled together. So it screws up your algorithm would be so beautiful i love the way a lot of we described it as like it's his dream it's this is my youtube dream and then it was like just that simple i like that mm -hmm. have you have you okay what do you think of my extension um well if you guys aren't aware when ludwig left twitch and came to youtube before he made the move he hired some really smart tech friends, or I don't know if it's friends or people he knows, but someone who's like on his team already, right? One of his employees, basically. And he paid them to create an extension for the YouTube chat to help the YouTube chat feel more like the Twitch chat with like just, you know, funny emotes and such like that. So this topic right here, another one that I definitely know some of my viewers care about, right? Because... YouTube overall is like a better experience, right? It's like I can literally turn the ads off so you guys don't have to watch ads during my live streams at all. Not even a pre-roll should get, you shouldn't even get it with a pre-roll ad, right? You don't have these kinds of options on Twitch, but you have a less fun chat experience on YouTube because there's just like none of the fun stuff is there, right? All the cool little, you know, fun emotes that are kind of specific to the, you know, gamer, you know, world and, and such, like, just none of it is there. And so this part right here is fantastic. I think that you did a good job of trying to recreate features that we don't have by bringing them over from Twitch with an extension. I was, first of all, I was impressed. I was very creative. Um, Please and, don't take and, it down. And I, no, no, I, I'm not. I actually cool. emailed our team and asked why we didn't have more of those features on YouTube. Oh my, so I got people in trouble? No. Okay, so back to my style. I'm not, I'm not, like, it's not, it's not a good ceo feature to uh -huh. have everybody afraid of you right Sorry, let's just establish that we're less fear-based that it's just not a good it's not a good way people don't no are not productive when okay. they're afraid sure um people work better in a more collaborative environment so i shouldn't um, yell I left this little bit extra in, even though it's not super relevant, just because I appreciated it. You know, I, I liked hearing that this is their style. It's also, I just think, good, right, to have such a successful CEO on record publicly saying this. Maybe some, maybe some shitty middle management people out there will hear this message and understand, right? I've, I've worked on too many, worked under too many dickheads, right? So I had to leave this in, right? Collaborative and not being fear-based and just a, a piece of crap to work under is better and people are more productive spread the knowledge everybody all right guys that's it for this one i don't want to like you know steal all of his content and basically just show the entire video wanted to hit you guys with the highlights that i think that you know normal just youtube viewers will care about not specifically if you're a creator and right if you want to go see the entire thing because it is interesting and also there's you know plenty of funny joking around and such in there i thought it was a really good interview uh, i'll definitely make sure to link ludwig's entire video in the description here Thank you very much to the YouTube members, Patreon people who help support me being able to do this. Really appreciate you guys. See y'all in the next video.